From the perspective of the Empire in this scene, I wanted to provide a balance to how Marva Andor provides her case to the townfolk on Ferrix, as it's very one-sided in its portrayal. Although the Imperial presence would have seemed unsettling to them, the Empire until this point in 5 BBY created stability to the galaxy after the failings of the dysfunctional Republic, and peace and order was being restored. Large swathes of the galaxy were in total support for the Empire, but I admit this support was largely from the favoured human populated worlds rather than the non-human races who were suffering under the Empire's laws. In the case of Ferrix, their treatment is in question with a large human population in order to warrant such an uprising against the Empire for simply occupying their towns in place of the incompetent corporate authority. The Imperial forces led by Supervisor Miro and Captain Tico were not to make life difficult for everyday inhabitants of Ferrix. The Empire were keeping a watchful eye on the inhabitants to find individuals who they saw as a significant security threat and known to them as Axis and Cassian Andor and their accomplices. Although the Imperial forces were very visible on the streets, Marva obviously feels strongly about the Imperial presence on Ferrix and the influence of Imperial rule from Coruscant. Like any government that experiences an attack by terrorists, it responds to that threat to its security and will use intelligence services to counter that threat. Although the Empire's methods are rather harsh at times, the Imperials are simply rooting out what they see as an insurgency disease, as Major Partagas points out earlier in the series. This becomes the main reason for their occupation, and by fighting the Empire will only make it worse for themselves as the incident will ensure a larger Imperial presence will be required to keep order. So in the end they have brought the problem of the Empire as they see it to their own door by committing crimes and failing to cooperate. It seems to me only a small minority of human citizens who don't like the Empire's rule are willing to resist and even fight them. To the ordinary Ferric citizen the Imperial occupation would have had very little impact on them and Marva seems to exaggerate that to them. Captain Tigo's reaction to Marva's call to fight the Empire was in my opinion totally valid as how could the Imperials stand by to advocate a former citizen inciting open rebellion against them? Until the bomb explosion his Imperial forces were simply attempting to contain the crowd's aggression. Only after the bomb was thrown at the Imperial headquarters, which would have been deemed a crime in anyone's view, Captain Tigo obviously felt compelled to give the order to use force by firing on the rioters. Although I can see why not everyone would support the Empire, I believe a balanced view is required to convey this story, as not everything is what it seems. The attention brought to Ferrix by the Empire was caused by Cassian Andor when he killed two corrupt corporate authority officers and then was attempting to sell stolen Imperial equipment to an even dodgier character, Luthien Rail. So from the Imperial's perspective, what did Marva expect? Her son is a fugitive and the Imperial government is after him. And let's be frank, Luthien Rail is a terrorist who is hell-bent on causing havoc to the Empire and gaining a reaction which he has certainly done since the successful heist on Eldani. Although his true reasons for the path he has chosen are not clear, he is clearly someone who has been wronged by the Empire during its rise. Despite the rebels' fight for freedom in both canon and legends, the New Republic's ability to provide stability and peace to the galaxy is yet to be explained in canon. Although the Mandalorian series did give some indication their forces were certainly stretched when detecting Imperial remnants inside the Outer Rim in this case. However, in legends, for decades after the Empire's defeat at Endor, the galaxy was thrown into chaos, with large Imperial factions still clinging on to what power they could grab. But to conclude, if this scene was in real life, Andor and Rail would certainly not be heroes of any kind, and would be viewed as simply fugitives. I realise this is somewhat a controversial view, but what did you think of this scene, and what happened? Let me know in the comments below. For more Imperial Perspective videos, please give a like and subscribe. Thank you for watching, and as always, long live the Empire.